Welcome back, y'all. Today we are breaking out the fly rod and reel, but with a Texas rig. That is right. Over the next two days, you're going to see us fish the banks. Oh my God, we got him. And the John Boat. This might be the one. We're throwing that yeah, Texas rig, baby. Up. Get him! Get him! For one of the most extreme challenges and uh, craziest videos we've ever put together, you're going to be shocked at the results as we try and find our new PB on the fly rod using a traditional casting setup to get the job done. Let's go. Told you, bro. That's a giant, dude. <laughs> Texas rig for the first time I have never seen this done I was just thinking to myself well they weren't hitting the moving bite for me yesterday we got to do something stupid well really smart <laughs> we got to catch them on the bottom and you might be thinking to yourself Weston stop doing this stuff for views I'm not doing this for views if I was I'd probably be throwing like a Texas rig on a fly rod I don't know I'm doing this to catch fish man because they were not on the moving bite yesterday despite how much I love throwing the seven inch game changer and we might break it out today depending on how much success we have with this this could be a terrible idea this is a dumb idea could be the smartest idea in fly fishing ever here's what we got rigged up we're going with an eighth ounce weight. I'm thinking nice and light. That way if I like fling this thing past my face and end up hitting my skull, I, uh, I only do an eighth ounce worth of damage instead of a quarter ounce. Then I'm gonna go with a, uh, a, a smaller hook than I would normally throw. I wanna say this is a three aught, but what I'm gonna do is pinch that barb on the hook down. That way if I accidentally, in the heat of my fly fishing swings, get a little carried away, and one just like, boom, hits me across the shoulder or gets stuck in the neck, we can hopefully just pull it right on out and don't have to worry about the barb because I am kind of concerned with what the damage that this hook could do right here. And you probably already knew, we're gonna go with the confidence bait. We're gonna pick out a bandito bug or a crack and craw. I've got some watermelon red flake bandito bugs and I've got some natural crack and craws. We might interchange a few things. We might even fish a worm. I don't know. I've never seen this done, but what I do know is we just recently picked up this 10 weight Orvis fly rod, which is like really beefy. I'm not going to probably be able to detect a bite because these rods are definitely in the tip a lot flimsier than like your muscle rod, your go-to rod that I'm normally throwing, right? Your standard casting gear. But if I can feel that fish swimming away with my T-rig, I'm going to jam that strip set and we're going to see if we can catch some big old Texas bass on a Texas rig with the fly rod. Thank me for this tutorial later <laughs> we'll see you at the water okay uh bandito bones cracking cross i can guarantee you ain't seen it before this ain't gonna work see this is what you usually throw a texas rig on right here something like a beautiful guggen squad go to rod medium heavy fast action i like a quarter ounce weight but i think that's a little heavy to be flinging on the fly rod the weight is pegged so it's not going to be able to slide around like that right you'll hear an argument when you're fishing texas rigs about pegging weights and how most people only peg it if they're fishing through thick cover because when you get a fish bite and you start fighting that fish right this weight can move up the line and now even when that fish is thrashing they don't have the weight on their side as leverage to free that hook that is why folks often don't peg their texas rig weights i kind of don't peg it most times these days just because it takes more time and modern problems require modern solutions and ain't nobody got time for that however this right here a double pegged eighth ounce crack and crawl i have never used before another thing to consider is that this fly line it's not cheap like fluorocarbon and fluoro gets expensive as well and what i mean by that is really mono fluoro or braid you know a 20 30 bucks a spool is probably top end now nah. This sinking fly line that I just picked up, which is really geared towards colder water for the winter months so it doesn't really get as spongy, and also it is sinking, cost me $100. So literally, just this fly line alone, if I were to get this thing caught and have to break it down and cut some off or just entirely get snagged to where I can't retrieve it, will be a huge setback. Not to mention the fact that I'm not going to be able to work this along the bottom because these rods are they are for flies. They're not meant for dragon bottom and ripping hook sets. So I'm going to have to be extremely careful not to damage this really $700 outfit when you take into account the 10 weight rod the reel the fly line sounds easy enough now casting between the trees that's the next thing hopefully i can get some casts before getting in trouble because maintenance is out probably gonna have to start off with some backhanded casts oddly enough this 10 weight rod doesn't really mess around it like actually casts this thing oh we have a fish oh my gosh it was just swimming out away with it. You gotta be so fierce with that strip set. Not practical whatsoever. Ideally, I would raise the rod out to the right and pull to the left to get a good hook set. They call it a strip set. And I wasn't able to do that since this tree's to my right. I could so easily break this rod on accident. Well, if I'm being quite honest, y'all, this thing is casting 
rather well on a 10 weight rod. I mean, look at her fly. And the double weight peg is like working wonders. Genuinely surprised. I've missed two bites. You pretty much can't feel them. The first one I saw my line swimming, and the second one was like a fierce hit at the end of a cast out there in that last pond. And I tried to go for it and he wasn't there. So he must've felt that hook and said, nah, I'm good. But this spot looks extra juice. And I don't doubt we could get a little something something right here. Oh my God, we got him, we got him. Oh, what are we even talking about? Yes, 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 yes. It can be done. It can be done, y'all. Wow. Double weight pegged crack and crawl. This ain't a joke out here. Get you some. All we can hope for is a lucky hook set. We got the L on that one. It's gonna be tough, y'all, because look, I had that fish hooked. But remember, I took that barb and I pinched it down because, you know, I might just use another hook here in a minute with the barb out. You know, live life on the edge. Maybe that was the reason why I lost that fish. Maybe that was the reason why I lost all three. Who knows? I can't, you know, can't think of everything. There we go. Got us one there. All right. Oh, no. That's enough for me, y'all. We have lost every fish we've hooked, so we are going to switch out the hook. How about that? Dang, man. Seriously, we had another one on, and it came off. Imagine if that was a bigger one. I would have been up set. We're going to go to a hook with a barb. It's clear that this could actually work, which is crazy. Every cast, this thing's making such a loud splash. You can't just be elegant and smooth with your thumbing and, like, make a nice little calm presentation to these fish right here. You got to just, like, boom, splash. It's hard enough to cast this thing let alone be subtle with it. And then when you do finally get one, with all your hard work and effort, you miss it. The situation calls for a hook with a barb. Oh, got him, got him. Yes, we got him. Come on, all right, there we go. I think we're gonna land this one, y'all. We got the barb, we have got the barb. Yes, oh my gosh. Out there in the middle too. Oh man, yes. Let's go. 10 weight combo, not even giving him any slack, y'all. There's no way we just caught a fish on a Texas rig. <laughs> Fly rod special. <laughs> oh my gosh, it worked. This thing's not even two pounds. I'm stoked. There's no way, y'all. Look at that. Insanity. I can't believe that just happened. It might not look like it after all the editing, but I have been at this for some time. We realized the barb is necessary, it seems. All I can say is I really want to do that again. I'm not necessarily satisfied with that size, but I'm so happy that the Texas rig worked. You have no idea. Like I'm just like stripping this thing through grass. I don't even feel the grass on this Texas rig. I bring it back. I've wasted like a 45 second retrieve on this thing being all grassed up. And I'm like, okay, well, I couldn't even tell. Like this is a serious challenge. I, I cannot believe we made that happen. But I will say there's some big ones lurking. How crazy would it be to catch like my fly fishing PB on this Texas rig today? or just in general on a Texas rig with a fly rod. That would be bonkers. Cheers to the first of many, y'all. Let's get back in the game. Got him. I don't know what we've got. I have zero clue. Oh, there we go. Nice. No way. We have upsized by like, uh, maybe nothing. <laughs> Let's go, y'all. Fish number two. This thing is harder to cast than you think. I've ruined so many spots because I'm like, I want to hit that. And then I try and cast at it and it does something weird, kind of like throwing a Texas rig on a fly rod. What I found is that you don't want your rod tip up for sure because then like the bandito bug doesn't fall naturally or whatever plastic you have Texas rig. You want that rod tip down by the water and now it's just able to sink right back down. And what I found is that with the rod tip close to the water, and just stripping and feeling out the line. If you get a bite, you kind of feel it on your fingers rather than worrying about the rod, which is what happens oftentimes in fly fishing anyways. Uh, I'm just trying to talk to a lot of my casting folks here. You got a better chance at detecting the bite and hooking up, so. What I just noticed on that last cast too, check this out. If you just give it a slow, smooth strip like this, after it sank, assuming you're using sinking line or maybe you're using a heavier, wait because you're a goofball too and trying this stuff out at home this slow methodical strip right here actually allows you to feel out the bottom like i feel the tungsten rubbing up against this rock right here and it's almost like dragging a jig which is fantastic for spring summer winter and fall so <laughs> so you might as well 
give this a little dangle, you fly guys that want to try some goofy conventional stuff. Got him. There we go. Slow dragging it on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in here, beauty. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Choked it. And there you have it. Bandito bug especial on the fly. See you, bud. Super weird. Not supposed to happen like this. Do me a favor and share this with your buddy who's a fly fisherman. And fly fishermen, share it with your conventional buddies. Honestly, I wanted to try some goofy stuff like this when I first got into it, but all the rods I was using were so flimsy. They were those little starter kits, or they were like uh, six weights when I started getting some decent gear. And then we grabbed this 10 weight, and I'm like, this could actually be, this could actually be done. Hour before sunset. I got an idea. Eat it. Gotcha. Sight fished him. That was sick. Sight fished him, y'all. Just switched the spot. That was so sick. That's a good one. Biggest one so far of the day, Texas rig. Oh my. This should not be happening. <laughs> Texas rig. See ya, bud. Got another. There we go. Grab it. Fish number two, come on in. Another solid one. This is insane. I don't know how many we've even got now on the Texas rig. Probably four, maybe five. Now that we got the barb on the hook, we're doing all right. What else we got around here? Got. As soon as they hit the surface, I saw him run after it. Nice. Got us another. Bandito bugs tearing it up. See ya. Three days later. All right, y'all, as crazy as day one was, we are breaking out the T-Rig on the fly setup for day two. We're out here with Torrance Pond Boys. Shoo! You already know the deal. We're breaking out the old John Bo, trying to find the biggest bass in the place. Hopefully we can link up with one of the biggest fish, if not the biggest we have ever caught on the fly in today's episode. Y'all stick around, we about to hit the water. Oh, this might be it. You, this bro. might be it. Giant, you think it's big? <laughs> <laughs> this might be it, y'all. Day two. We're going for the fly rod PB today, boys. Three and a half, and we got it. Oh, bro, bro. This might be the one. We're throwing that Texas rig, baby. Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, the fly rod. <laughs> Get him. Get him. Yo. Texas rig, baby. That's a nice one. T. Oh, Jeez, I don't know if this is going to beat my PB. Hell yeah. <laughs> I want to see what we're working with. Three, dude, three flat, bro. Nice. Three pounder, holy smokes. You don't really look like three pounds. Maybe they're denser in the cold water. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> See you, bud, thanks for the bite on the green pumpkin purple bandito bug. All right, let's try and get some more, y'all. This is nuts. We're going for that PB today, it's gonna happen. Whatever, man. <laughs> Dude, I, I said even if it's not huge. <laughs> it's, it's got to be a fish. The second biggest fish of the day, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Told y'all we'd be on him. Oh, f are you a fish? Yep. Oh, I mean, shoot. <laughs> he said. <laughs> okay, as hyped as we are on that one, we trying to catch the bigs, y'all. Can't be messing around with peewee. He had it for a while. Scared me. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, he smoked it. Hooked up, y'all. We're having GoPro trouble. Another fish in the boat on the T-Rig. Not quite the size we're after, though. We're going for that PB still. Come on. Bring it to us. Braid lettuce, baby. Let's go. Double pig. Got him. Got him. Come on, let's go. Not bad at all, he had it for a minute too. Come on, baby. Get on over here. I said get on over here. Quit playing. This is insanity. This is so cool. So much fun, look at those red lips. People always got a different comment on why their lips are red, so I'd love to hear your take on it, y'all. Check him out, he's been caught before. That thing messed up. Sorry about that, buddy. I didn't mean to put one more hole in your face, but I kind of did. Why you're not catching big fish on the fly. <laughs> You've been doing it wrong all these years. <laughs> yeah, so basically like you can't feel through the rod. You only feel when they like tug the line on your fingers. So you have to keep the rod down and just kind of like slowly strip, dragging them along the bottom until you feel that tug, if you feel it. Cause sometimes they just pick it up and they move. Like that last one, I was like, okay, my is fine. Oh, 
that might be the one, huh? That's the little guy, but he just ran off with it. Nice. Yeah. Yes. Nice one. Solid. Get in here, son. Hammering that thing. Oh, you actually got a fish. I thought you got snagged. Yeah. <laughs> nice, dude, on the square bro. bill. Wow. Oh my goodness. Party, bro. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was like our first bite in an hour, y'all. It's kind of slowed down, but that's okay. It's tough to give fly Texas rig tips when you know no one's ever gonna do this. Here's a tip. Don't do it. What a crazy video, y'all. We went from the banks to the John boat. I, I can't even tell you the amount of fish we caught on the Texas rig. Going weedless on the fly, something I've never seen done. You gotta strip set it hard. Let me tell you what, if you don't have something like a 10 weight, I don't know if you're gonna be able to make it happen. Not like anyone's gonna try this, but if you do, you might be one of the craziest fishermen on YouTube. Anyways, with that, go ahead, drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out Plum Boy's channel for getting out here with us. We're about to load this bad boy up onto the truck, so don't forget to cop any Bandito bugs you might need, any merch, 10% off with code West and do not not get caught paying full price. Get you about 30 packs and rake you some up as well. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Told you, bro. It's a giant, dude.